the Ingevity products. We're going to be talking about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine here in a, uh, just a minute. Uh, if you have questions about uh, anything you may have read about or heard about, we welcome your phone calls. Of course, if you have a success story or you want to just contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010. We welcome your phone calls, 844-236-6010. And we will get your calls in our second segment. Uh, bottom of the hour, we're going to talk to Dr. Andrew Harley, Ph.D. Uh, he's got an undergrad degree in earth sciences and a Ph.D. in soil science and plant nutrition. And he has been studying minerals and, and plants and pesticides, heavy metals, herbicides, etc., for uh, over 25 years. We're going to be talking to him about this, this uh, article that some of you have written to me about. Uh, and I'll be talking about it here in a, just a minute or so. Uh, it's at the bottom of the hour, so if you have uh, phone calls, uh, give us a shout here so we can get your calls in our second segment, 844-236-6010. Uh, let's see what else I want to tell you. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Okay. So uh, we're going to take a little digression here. We'll pick up where we left off on our last program about grains and nitrates and nitric oxide tomorrow. But I've been getting phone calls and letters, and probably if uh, you're doing any longevity business, you've probably been getting calls or letters yourself. Uh, last week at the end of the program, uh, at the end of the Bright Side, we got a call from a gal who brought an article to my attention. I hadn't heard about this, but uh, I since have. This is an article that appeared on a website that I usually like, although... Uh, sometimes on this website there's a, some goofy stuff, but I usually like this website. Anyway, this article appeared on the website. It was written by somebody, somebody unknown, anonymous, somebody who apparently doesn't like Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And I've gotten calls, so is Longevity. I'm sure you guys have gotten calls and, and letters if you're in the, doing the Longevity business. So in the interest of clearing up any concern or confusion about this article that appeared on... Uh, I think it was before it's news.com about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. I want to give you my take on, uh, on this article, which is somewhat incendiary and inflammatory. All right, so one of the most gratifying things about doing the bright side is the fact that you guys, my listeners, you guys get what I'm trying to communicate here, what I'm trying to say, what I want to stand for, what I want my professional, my personal, my spiritual life to stand for, what I'm offering you guys, what I'm, what I'm offering you to identify with, namely the power we have over our bodies, for better or worse. We have power over our bodies for better and we have power over our bodies for worse. We can mess things up or we can fix things up. We can do it ourselves. This is what I want the bright side, and it's what I want to stand for. I want to stand for the simplicity of being healthy, and that includes getting healthy, and it involves not doctors, not medical strategies, but things we can do ourselves as individuals without experts, without white coats, without authorities. We can be our own health care professionals by relaxing, by supplementing, by moving our bodies, by eating correctly. Simple things, lifestyle things, by understanding the relationship between our thoughts, our mental nature, and our emotions, our psychological nature, and health, and relaxing and calming the body. These things all go together. And of course, so does intelligently and strategically using nutritional supplements. And if you've listened to this program for even five minutes or ten minutes, you know that I love the Beyond Tangy Tangerine from Longevity. I've been using it in its many guises, in its several guises, for going on 18 years. It's a spectacularly designed formula. I'm speaking as a formulator. I'm speaking as a clinician. I've experienced the results personally myself. I've seen the results on countless others. And suffice it to say, I'm a fan of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. So I was surprised and a little irritated, I must admit, when I read this article that showed up on the internet last week. A caller pointed it out to me at the end of a, uh, a program, I believe it was Thursday, Thursday morning. And uh, you guys have emailed me about this article, and I've spoken to several people already. And understandably, this article has caused concern. If you haven't seen it, the headline on the cover page has the words poison in big red letters, and it's right over a bottle of Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Now, leaving aside the really laughable nature of this claim of poison, you know, thousands of people over the course of uh, 17, 18 years have used this product. Probably tens, maybe hundreds of thousands have used, hundreds of thousands of people have used this product. Some people for 10 years, some people for 12 years, some people for 17 or 18 years. And not a single one has responded in a way that would appear that they were poisoned. So this is a laughable claim, first of all. Nobody's poisoned by this stuff. On the contrary, most people will tell you they feel awesome when they use this stuff. So leaving that aside, if you read the article, 
there's very little substance to this claim. As inflammatory as this headline is poison. If you read the article, and I take it, you guys who have emailed me or, or called or, uh, or Facebooked me have not read this article because there's nothing in this article. The headline is inflammatory. So obviously this guy has some kind of agenda, whoever he is, but there's nothing in the article that is even remotely uh, uh, indicative of poison in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. The anonymous author writes, quote, so a few months ago I sent a, a sample of BTT 2.0 to an independent Swiss laboratory for toxicolo toxicological analysis, and the results are in. Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0 is contaminated and not fit for, beyond, not fit for human consumption. This is, what the, unquote, this is what this guy's saying. In his, uh, in his hit piece, and it is a hit piece, because there's no facts in here, really, except for his claims, assertions. So how does he come to this conclusion that it's poison? Well, apparently, according to his supposed testing, BTT has nitrates, poison, what? Has phosphates, okay? Chloride, fluoride, bromide, aluminum, and sulfates, and then he starts quoting government recommendations. So there's seven things that he's complaining about here, and then he starts quoting government recommendations and compares what happens if you use over the amount of the government recommendations, and that's how he proves his point that this stuff is poison, because it has too much chloride or too much fluoride or bromide or aluminum or sulfates or nitrates or phosphates, and that's it. Now, no, no mention is made of what kind of fluoride or chloride he found. Uh, no mention is made of the fact that fluoride has nutritional value, bromide has nutritional value, sulfates have nutritional value, etc. No mention is made of the protocols or the techniques or what kind of testing was done. Uh, nor is mention made of uh, the, the form of the minerals. Was it plant-derived minerals? Was it heavy minerals? Was it, uh, you know, minerals are not the same. Not all minerals are the same. Not all fluoride is the same. Not all iodine is the same. Not all arsenic is the same. Not all chromium is the same. We're going to talk to Dr. Andrew Harley at the bottom of the hour about all this. So some guy is circulating an article where he claims without any proof that he had some lab in Switzerland. Why in Switzerland, of all places, could he find a lab in the United States? So he, he apparently, this is his claim, he sends this product out to Switzerland, and then, with no proof or any, it just claims that he makes, he conclusively states in big red letters, poison, BTT, not fit for human consumption. No mention is made. Where was the lab? What was the research protocol? What were the results exactly? Can I see the results, mister? Who are you? No mention is made of the author. Did they really say unfit for human consumption? There are so many problems with this article, it's almost ridiculous that I even have to address it. But I am going to address it. I got more to say when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network, 855, or 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're on hold, hang tight. I'll get you in just a minute. A couple more things I want to say about this article that appeared on beforeitsnews.com. Headline, Poison, Beyond Tangy Tangerine's Poison. All right, so before we went to break, I was telling you, if you read the article, it's a lot different than if you just look at the headlines. There's nothing in the article about how this product was tested, what kind of metals are in there, what the exact results of the supposed Switzerland testing, why Switzerland... Did, they, did the researchers really say unfit for human consumption? Did they really say poison? Listen, I have been offering tips, strategies, nutritional choices, ideas, concepts for people, for patients to help them reverse their health challenges for nearly 30 years, since 1983. What is that? That's over 30 years, if you include my, uh, my three years as a student, uh, my four years as a pharmacy student. Over 30 years, I know a lot about supplementation. I know a lot about formulation. I know a lot about nutrition in the body. And when I see an idea or strategy or formulation or product work over and over and over again, when I see it work repeatedly to address and reverse degenerative diseases, I, I notice that. And I want you to notice it too. When I tell you to take a product or I recommend, I don't tell you to take a product, I suggest a product, I recommend a product. It's not because I make 10 cents on the product or 20 cents because I have a longevity distributorship. It's because I'm a healthcare professional. I've seen the results, not once, not twice, not 100 times, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of times. Results like, this is from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Results uh, like uh, drops in blood pressure, weight loss, people reducing or entirely eliminating their prescription medication. Results like feeling more energy. This is from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine that's supposedly poisoned. More restful sleep, better sex, lower blood sugar. Results like just feeling better. So when I read an article posted by some anonymous source, or even an expert for that matter, 
but especially somebody who's not even telling you who he is. Especially one that's as weakly supported as this, this article, if you will. And when I compare it to what I've seen with my own eyes, what I know with my own eyes, it's very difficult for me to take this thing seriously. If this guy says, said to me, well, uh, there are people who are dying from this poison BTT stuff. I've seen people dying. I've seen the agony. It's caused suffering. It's caused misery. That's one thing. If he said that, he's seen people suffering and in agony and poison from beyond tangy tangerine with the same sense of personal experience that I, t I have when I tell you about blood pressure dropping and pounds falling off and energy increasing and appetite, uh, appetite being suppressed and and medication reduction. When I tell you about these personal, uh, these things that I've witnessed personally, more times than I can count, if he said, if he said that he knew that the BTT was poison, with his, based on his own experience, with the same kind of certitude that I have when I tell you I've seen this stuff work, then I would start to pay attention. Then I would take this guy seriously. But to simply rip on a product with no backing that so many people find valuable, to rip and try to dissuade people from using a nutritional supplement that so many people have made an important part of their daily lives and their nutritional program by quoting some supposed results about levels of a substance that somebody from the government may consider problematic. Number one, that's not fair. And number two, it smacks of an agenda or an ulterior motive. Number one, it's depriving people or potentially depriving people of a powerful source of nutrition that can change their lives. And number two, it smells bad. It smells like he's got some kind of ulterior motive. But of course, we have freedom of the press and freedom of expression, and people can say whatever they want, and they can make whatever claims they want. And just like they said in, in ancient Rome, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. Always be careful. As Ronald Reagan said, trust yet verify. As they say in Islam, uh, trust in God or trust in Allah, but tether the camel. So we just... Okay, we are back on the bright side. Uh, we'll get to Dr. Harley here in just a minute. Uh, I want to finish up with Farhan. Uh, Farhan was talking about uh, the difference. He asked me about the difference between plant proteins and animal proteins. And here's the big difference. First of all, plants do contain protein. They just don't contain the building proteins that you'll find in whey and egg specifically. Whey and egg are the two primal building proteins, the two primary building proteins. That's because an egg is basically a cell, and a cell, it's an egg cell, and cells are meant to divide and grow, so it got, has everything you need to divide and grow, for a cell to divide and grow, and that includes something called growth factors, as well as protective factors, antibiotic factors. These factors are not the same as, as protein, uh, not the same as amino acids, they're peptides, they're strings of amino acids, and they're only found in dairy and egg. And by the way, this is what makes dairy and egg protein problematic because sometimes these peptides or these, these uh, strings of amino acids that are only found in dairy and whey, because they're active, they can set off an immune response. So that makes them problematic and it makes them very, very important, especially for building. Vegetarians, I'm sorry, there's no vegetables that contain these kinds of things, these kinds of uh, elements, these kinds of factors, growth factors specifically, and also antibiotic factors or antiseptic factors, and also factors that stimulate the, the, uh, the development of the digestive tract and improve the environment of the digestive tract as it, as it uh, regards probiotics and bacteria. Only uh, whey, or dairy I should say, and whey especially because it's so packed, and egg contain these kinds of proteins. If you're a bodybuilder, you can get away with not, without using dairy and egg if you're vegan or vegetarian, but in my opinion, you're depriving yourself of some very powerful growth-inducing elements and protective elements, uh, uh, antiseptic and antibiotic elements, and gut development or digestive development elements that you're not going to get from vegetables or from uh, well, you're not going to get from vegetable protein, I should say. You only get an egg and whey. I hope that answers your question, Farhan. And uh, if you've got any more questions, you can email me, Ben, at ksco.com. All right. So I'm really excited about our next guest because this guy is an expert in one of the more confusing subjects in nutrition. No, the most confusing subject in nutrition. That's the idea of minerals. Minerals are all, just because two minerals have the same name doesn't mean they're the same structure. And this is very important to recognize. There's different kinds of chromium. There's different kinds of lead. There's different kinds of mercury. There's different kinds of iodine, et cetera. And some are, some are uh, uh, healthy and some are not. 
and you have to know about the form of the mineral. We talk here about plant-derived minerals and they're a completely different animal, so to speak, completely different mineral than a heavy metal, for example. I want Dr. Uh, Andrew Harley, our guest, to come, uh, our guest coming up here to talk about this a little bit, Dr. Harley has an undergrad degree in earth sciences and a PhD in soil science and plant nutrition. And make no mistake about it, this is a very important and very difficult PhD to have. He's got 25 years of managing environmental issues in the soil and in the water. Uh, he's res been responsible for uh, hundreds of assessments and, cleanup, uh, and the cleanup of contaminated sites. Uh, he's dealt with a wide range of contaminants, including herbicides, pesticides, heavy metals. His specialty is soil mineral, soil remineralization, that is returning soils, returning minerals back to the soil to improve soil health uh, as well as food nutrition. And uh, he's also a very uh, proud member and I'm proud to have him aboard uh, in the Longevity family. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dr. Harley. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, you're doing great, thanks, uh, Dr. Pete. Uh, thanks for having me on the call. Thank you for, uh, thank you for joining us. So, uh, when I was in pharmacy school and uh, when I was studying chemistry, there was nothing uh, that had the same, set, the same idea of difficulty as something called PCHEM, right? Physical chemistry. And there's a, there were these right. bumper stickers that people used to have that said, honk if you passed PCHEM. Because physical chemistry is the, right, have you ever seen that? Honk if you passed PCHEM. PCHEM or physical right. chemistry for the listeners is the hardest, sex, the hardest uh, discipline in all of chemistry. It has a reputation for being the most difficult discipline in all of chemistry because it's about the, the, uh, the physics of chemistry. It's about the electrons. It's about the quantum nature of what we call molecules and chemicals and atoms. And this is why minerals are such a confusing subject. Dr. Harley is an expert in these ideas, and that's why I wanted to have him come on the program. Doc, tell us a little bit, first of all, about your credentials, and then I want you to get into the idea of minerals are all being different. First of all, what specifically did you study in school in terms of minerals? Um, so, so uh, as I said, undergraduate it was just just earth sciences. So, so effectively a geology degree. Um, and through that process, uh, where I really concentrated in was the area of geo, what, what I call geochemistry, which is the the, the study of the earth um, and the chemistry of the earth and how all of those things things play out. Um, from there, I let me let me, stop, let me stop you here for a second, Doctor. When you say the chemistry of the earth, you mean the chemistry of earth minerals, correct? Yeah, that's right. So, so, so everything that, that, that we have comes from, you know, effectively comes from the Earth. So, so for example, uh, if we're at a zinc mine, for example, what is the chemistry of that zinc? How does it relate to, 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 to the minerals? Um, through to mineral weathering, how do minerals weather, how do soils form, what is the chemistry associated with that. If we add water, what happens to those minerals, what happens to the form of chemistry uh, okay. of, those, of those minerals. Um, as you said, that, 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 I mean, there are two main components that are, that, that, that are important in chemistry, and, uh, you know, especially in the earth, and that is the, that is the, 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 the oxygen component, um, you know, and the uh, and, and the water component. How do those two things combine to change, um, you know, effectively a rock into something that becomes soluble? Okay, hang on, hang on, hang tight. So you said something very important there. There's a way that a rock can be converted into something valuable, nutritionally valuable, and it involves solubility. Did I hear you correct? Correct. Okay, so let me say that again for the listeners. Okay, rocks are hard inert, relatively inert substances, but they can be converted into nutritional substances. They can be converted from rocks into nutrients, and this conversion involves how water-soluble these elements will be. So how, uh, to cut to the chase here, Dr. Harley, tell us about the differences in, say, a mineral like chromium or a mineral like iodine or even a mineral like, uh, like iron. Tell us about what makes something toxic, a toxic mineral, and then how can that toxic mineral be converted into a valuable, nutri non-toxic, nutritional mineral? Okay, great. Great, Dr. Stu. So I'm, I'm going to introduce the concept called, called uh, redox, called, called reduction and oxidation. I mentioned that, that oxygen is, 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 is the basis of life. It is also the basis for these chemical reactions. And what happens is that there is the transfer of electrons. It's an, it's, it's, it's an energetic transfer between um, um, air and, 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 and a rock, um, um, uh, um, water and a rock, these, these components. And as that energy transfers... From the water to the rock, from, the transfer comes from the water to the rock or from the air to the rock, correct? Correct. 
Okay. And what happens is that you then get a change in an electronic state. So uh-huh. you use the, you, you you mentioned chromium, for example, and everyone I you know I, I you know everyone's not sure what's that you know Aaron Brockovich and hexavalent chrome, and hexavalent chrome means that there are, it has a char a positive charge of six uh, electrons. When that uh, electron is is lost out of that, it reduces down to to what is called I'm sorry oxidized to what is called chrome three. Now chrome three hexavalent chrome six hexavalent chrome is toxic. That is a toxic compound. But as that electron is transferred to chrome 3, then what happens is that actually becomes a, a, a non-toxic form and is actually the form that the body actually needs. Okay, hang tight. So we got to take, take a break, Doc. But what I'm hearing you say is that be, uh, you can take toxic chrome, react it with oxygen, or react it with water, and it becomes a nutritional element, correct? Correct. Okay, hang tight. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're talking to Dr. Andrew Harley about minerals. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Dr. Andrew Harley. Dr. Mineral, I'm going to call you Dr. Harley, if that's okay, just so everybody that's understands correct. that you're a mineral expert, and that's very important because minerals are all confusing. But before you went, we went to break, you were saying how by reacting, uh, by, uh, by its reaction with oxygen or its reaction with water, a toxic rock, a uh, toxic mineral or a rock inert mineral can be converted into a nutritional mineral, Correct. Yeah, so the, the, the way of thinking of understanding is that there's, there's, there's this energetic dance uh, that goes on, uh, you, know, you know, between, between the rock, rock and water, rock and air, rock and plants, um, uh, rock and acids, all of these things can, can there's this dance where, where, where the, the, these minerals change form depending on the, 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 the geochemical condition under which they are found. Who they're dancing with, what they're dancing with, essentially. If they're dancing with water. Now, you said something very interesting. You said that a mineral can be changed by its dance, and I love how you said that, because that's exactly what it is. It's a back and forth and give and take at the electron level. Uh, a mineral can be changed by its dance with plants, thus Correct. the term plant-derived minerals. So not all minerals are the same, first of all. I'm, I'm saying this to the listeners now. Not all minerals are the same, even if they have the same name. Not all chromiums are the same. Not all iodines are the same. Not all arsenics are the same. Not all mercuries are the same, etc. It depends on how this mineral reacts with its environment. One of, it, one of the environments that it can react with is a plant environment. These are, when, when a mineral uh, reacts with the plant, it's called a plant-derived mineral. Tell us what those are, uh, Dr. Harley. So these are, these, these are basically, so, so the root, as the root goes into the ground, um, it actually releases organic acids. That the acids help to break, break down the, uh, the, the, the rock. Um, it is then taken into the plant, and the plant organizes the minerals uh, in such a way that, that it makes it um, available and nutritious for, for animals. And in fact, there's, 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 it, there's some, there's, there's, sorry, go on, ben. Uh Can it do it with mercury? Can a plant uh, turn mercury? So, yes. can, so a plant can take mercury, which everybody's uh, terrified of, justifiably so, and it can convert sure. that mercury, can dance with the mercury, as you said, at the electron level and make that mercury nutritionally valuable, whether to humans or to animals. Correct. It can neutralize it and can make it available. So if I told you this, if I told you the Beyond Tangy Tangerine had mercury in it, as a geochemist, as a PhD, what would be the first question you would ask? First question is what form is it in? Perfect. Firstly, what form is it in and what is its concentration? Did you guys hear that? That's what you got to know. Not all mercury is the same. So if some bonehead prints an article that says there's mercury in here, in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, you've got to ask what kind of mercury. Is the same true about aluminum? Same is true. Same is true about aluminum. And the other thing about that, that, that Ben, and you know, this is a chemist. It all depends on on, on, on the particular analysis. There are there, there there are hundreds of analysis you could determine, you could do to understand what what is in the 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 the, the, um, the compound. So 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 you need to know the analysis. You need to know the form. You need to know the concentration. And these are the things taken in total before you can make that decision. Okay. Now, did you read this article? That I, that, did you get a chance to read this thing that was I published? Did, I, I did get a chance to read it. Then, yeah. Okay. So what's your take on it? Look, I mean, there's a, there's, there's a couple of things. I mean, firstly, he, you know, the, 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 the results have been compared, on, I am assuming, to groundwater uh, um, data. Certainly the arsenic appears to be, and that's like, okay, great. So, so certainly, you know, there, there are thresholds for understanding um, uh, the concentration of metals within Groundwater, but that is that 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 is a mass in a water component. 
We don't know, again, the analysis that was done on the Beyond Pengy Tangerine, which is a solid. So really, the, the the results should be reported in milligrams per kilogram, or you know, you know, you know, you know, mass per mass. Because so solid. even the even um, the way he reported the data is off because he didn't he 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 reported them in term in in terms of a solid, not in terms of a liquid, correct? Correct. It's 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 he he appears to be taking a solid, and then reporting it as 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 a liquid result, which which is nonsensical. So right on the face of it, just by looking at 5.4 milligrams per liter, how, why would a solid be measured in, in liters? Well, isn't it? It has to be dissolved. It's, so, so what you've dissolved is, so if, like, if you took a, a 100 grams of Beyond Tangy Tangerine and then dissolved it into a liter of water, um, then, you, then you run whatever that analysis is, and then, but then you need to convert it back to, to, to solid. what the original mass was. So, right. So... You know, you know, you know. It's if you're if you're analyzing a solid, you should be reporting milligrams of a metal in terms of total kilograms of what it was you're you're analyzing. So right away we got a problem just looking at the the units that he used. How about the idea? How about the the bromides, the nitrates, and the sulfates? What's your take on that? Um, again, what are those? What what are the um, what are the forms that they that that they they're, they're in? Again, it looks as if that he was comparing these. Uh, entirely to, to to groundwater data, um, which has its place. But you know, if you dissolved a you know a um, a can of tangy tangerine into a you know threw it down a well and then uh, came back a couple of days later and measured it, you know, I guarantee you, you'd be getting very different results. Because you're measuring the groundwater. Because you're measuring the groundwater. You know, you know, you know the, we, we don't know what form it's in. It's like I'm assuming, I haven't seen all the data, but I'm assuming he's reporting total, you know, total chrome, for example. Do we know, is it chrome 3, is it chrome 6? What is the, you know, what is the form that it's in? Okay, so do, bottom line here, what's your, would, you, would, you take this stuff, would you take this article seriously as a Ph.D. geochemist, no. soil geologist? No, not at all. It, I, I, you know, again, it's, 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 it's highly alarmist. There's no, there's no data to support it. There's no indication what the what the analysis was. All he's done is, is he sent a sample of the supposedly the to an independent Swiss lab for toxicological analysis. What are the analyses? We don't, know, there, we don't know what they are. Is there something special about Swiss labs? Is, is Switzerland? Is Switzerland some? I'm assuming they're, they're good at analyzing chocolate. I, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know why. We, yes, that's true. Uh, maybe he should do the uh, all the chocolate products too and send them out to Switzerland. There, I don't know there, why. There I don't know why he went to Switzerland either. All right. So what's your take on the Beyond? How long have you been using the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Doctor Doctor Harlow? Um, I've been using it for a couple of years as as Beyond Tangy Tangerine for a couple of years, and then you know, the the good old plant derived minerals for for over a decade now. And are, do you feel poisoned in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Ob- obviously, yeah, no, not. No, I'm, 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 I'm doing fine. And in fact, you've met, you, you know, you've met my beautiful you, wife, who has been, you know, you know, you know, she has avoided. Um, uh, doctor said they needed to fuse her neck, and now she can, she can basically live pain free. So, it, you, know, you, you know, you know, no problem. You're a PhD. You could do a lot of things. You could write. You could teach. You could be a professor. But you got yourself involved with longevity. Tell me why. My academic research was such that. I worked out we could theoretically and academically improve improve the soil, uh, but it was just too expensive and it was logistically difficult. The more I looked into it, the more I found that our food system is actually killing us and it's getting harder and harder to actually change the food system en masse. The only way that I see that we could do it is through a product for, for, you know, such as longevity where we need to be doing that supplementation. There's no way we're getting what we need out of our food. Just, just, just can't. We need to be doing supplementation. This product being plant-derived, uh, having the spectrum that it has, and having the, 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 the scientific credential behind it, I believe, is the, the best company out, you know, you know, out there right now. What, as, a, as a PhD, as, a, uh, as an academician, as a professor, as a scientist, what's your take on Dr. Wallach and his work? I think it's fantastic. You go and have a look at his his um, uh, all of his academic work. It, it is um, it, it is second to none, and that's how I got involved in, in longevity. Was when I was doing my academic research, I came across you know his work and his work on minerals, and that's how I became became involved. Um, there's another there's another great book uh, for for your readers to get a hold of if they can. It's called Soil, Grass, and Cancer. Which that's was an amazing book. Uh, 
That's an amazing you know, book. Amazing book. Yeah, yeah, and amazing. That, outli- that, that outlines everything that Wallach talks about independently. If you want to, if you want another version of what Wallach is talking about, get a hold of this book, uh, yeah. Andre Voisin's Sawgrass and Cantor. Absolutely, will 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 change your thinking around uh, 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 around this problem. That's awesome. And by the way, that book is is uh, you gotta you gotta dig around for it. I had I had spent like almost two hundred dollars for it, but it was worth it. It's a great book. Soil grass um, and cancer. Acres, yeah, yeah. Acres USA. You should be able to get a hold of it. Acres USA. What was the other book you were telling me about? I forgot what that was. Another uh, soil book. What was the first book you read on soil? Uh, it was the first book you read. You told me it was a classic book. Green cover. Oh, oh, oh secret, se- yeah, secrets of the soil. Secrets of the soil. That's another amazing book. So, secrets of the yeah, soil yeah, and okay. yeah, that's a great one too. Uh, secrets yeah, of the yeah, soil yeah. and soil grass and cancer. Doctor Harley, it's been a total pleasure. It's been an honor, and this is the quality, folks. Listener, for the listeners, this is the kind of quality people you're going to meet. You're going to be involved with. You're going to get to consult with and deal with when you join. If you're on the fence about joining Longevity, uh, Doctor Harley, uh, it's been a total, total pleasure. I hope I. I get to see you soon, buddy. Okay, thanks, Ben. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, have a beautiful day. All right, that was Dr. Andrew thanks, Harley, uh, geochemist and soil scientist, and, and that's uh, that's pretty much everything you've heard on the bright side. I, I, everything he said is stuff you've been we've been talking about here for years. Anyway, well, tomorrow we'll continue talking about uh, wheat and anxiety, and then we'll uh, finish up with nitrates and nitric oxide. I'm pharmacist Ben. If you want to join the Brightside Ben team, love to have you aboard. Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for the Brightside Ben phone team. Have yourselves a spectacular, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. 